Chapter 7 Wandering into the hospital, not knowing what she'd find, tears pooled in Adrian's eyes. It was heartbreaking seeing Lysel in bed with tubes hooked up to his arms, and a tube running from his nose and mouth, with him hardly conscious. Drayton lay in a bed across from him. He had bandages across his wide muscular chest. Drayton managed to open his eyes. He recognized Adrian's scent as she stood in the doorway in tears. The medication Robert had given him was slowly wearing off, and he tried opening his mouth to speak to Adrian. He tried sitting up, but he was too weak. The only thing he could do was to raise his hand to gesture for her to come near. We can bring him into the house tomorrow, Robert said, watching at Drayton. He's healing quickly, but he still needs bed rest, Robert said, adjusting Drayton's bandage, then bending to look into his eyes with a small flashlight. From what these two have been through, it would take a year for a man in his twenties to heal. Because they are werewolves in their twenties, and strong and healthy, I say no more than four weeks, and they would be able to take a bear down or a moose, but this time, they would have to do it as a pack. Robert tried to be positive. He made an attempt at humor, which had been lost on the worried look on Adrian's face, where tears pooled in her eyes. Adrian's emotions written on her face alarmed Drayton, her sad eyes staring into space. She stood near Lysel's bed first. He was still being fed through tubes, and his body weight had fallen to half of his usual size. The muscles in his large arms were dissipating. I have a therapist coming in every day for Lysel. That tube in his nose is to make sure he's getting enough oxygen. It looks worse than it really is. It may be hard for him to stand and walk the first few days, but he can do it. He's strong, young and capable, Robert said. Adrian leaned over and kissed Lysel, and he held her hand tight. He squeezed her hand, not wanting to relinquish it, but he did, because he was too medicated to do anything else. Robert wasn't worried for Lysel and Drayton. He knew they would be fine if they stayed immobile for a few more days, but what would happen if he told them about Hunter and Wilder? They would probably get up and tear their stitches, bleed out and die. He was the doctor, and he made the decision not to tell them and wait a few more days to tell Adrian. He didn't want any more failed attempts at trying to rescue Mina. He trusted Wilder because he knew Wilder had a cool head and didn't let emotions affect his judgment. Robert was fully aware that it wouldn't do any good for him to go running off to Alaska, knowing how much Mina's father hated him and the Samses. Besides, Wilder being a werewolf and the head alpha would have more influence than Robert. If Mina's father was crazy enough to clash with Wilder, there were others who didn't want to challenge him. They knew what that meant. Banishment to Russia, where they would have to spend their lives in terrain harsher than anything in Alaska, where rogue wolves controlled and dominated territories that even Wilder didn't want to tread into. It was Bane's father and brother that had first been banished to Alaska, when there weren't as many men rushing there for hunting and fishing. But Wilder, against the requests of Lysel and Drayton, had brought them back to Oregon and gave them their own pack, and now Wilder wished he hadn't made that grievous mistake. Stepping off his private jet, Wilder took only what was necessary to survive. He had to travel light. When he was far enough away from the airfield, he shifted into his large werewolf self. How many years he felt that being a werewolf was a curse, but what was a curse was also a blessing. He broke into a run. It was easy for him to get up to 80 miles an hour. He was able to sustain that speed for a long period of time. As a werewolf he could outrun wolves. They could only manage 40 miles an hour. Lone werewolves could be a problem, especially if they were lurking for food. Nevertheless, Wilder knew there wasn't man nor beast as fast as him. He had to stay clear of some animals who had never seen a werewolf and might not be afraid of him, probably some polar bears migrating from the remote north. Wilder didn't want to enter any wolves' territory by mistake, because he didn't want to expend his energy fighting off cubs or yearlings. Although they didn't have the experience he possessed, if they were in a pack, he could be overwhelmed by them in a group fight. 
As a werewolf, now he could hunt for fresh meat, and fresh water wouldn't be a problem, especially now when the rivers and streams were breaking up, but he had to be careful crossing the lakes and streams. He didn't want to come this far and lose his life through carelessness. He had too much to live for. He had plans for Adrian when he returned. She would have given birth to Drayton's pups, and that would leave him to have her pregnant by next year. Wilder's plans occupied his mind as he plowed through deep snow, and then he heard what he thought to be a plane. He knew what that meant. Men were in the area and in the sky. When they were in the sky, they were deadly. From the sound, his hearing discerned that it was a slow-moving plane. He stopped under a tall pine and looked up at it. He was right. He could see the scope of a gunner reflecting from the sun and the snow, but the gun wasn't trained on him, it was trained on a large black wolf. He even saw the name of the plane. Bartlett. He knew that company. He had been at odds with that company for years. They would rent planes to cowardly hunters who thought hunting from a plane was sport. He watched at the plane as it slowed down and hovered low, and the hunter took aim at a defenseless wolf searching for food. It wasn't a werewolf. He could tell right away, because werewolves were much larger. Then the ring of shots firing made a loud definite noise, and an echo bounced off the side of the mountain where he stooped, loosening the snow behind him, as he crouched lower at the bottom of it, trying to hide behind a tree. He heard every sound, and before he could move, and before he could look up and get to cover, an avalanche of snow came tumbling down burying him beneath it. He had learned the way of the wolf, and although he was deep beneath the snow, he managed to tunnel with his large paws and make a hole, and there he lay, until he thought the plane had disappeared and the snow had settled. He took that time to rest, because he didn't know what he would face later. The snow soft and melting from the earlier bright sunlight during the day, proved in Wilder's favor. He found it easy to dig his way out. When he crawled out of the hole, he stood as a white werewolf in a world of darkness. Clouds blanketed the moon hiding its light. In Nevada, Wilder's brother Lysel had been the wolf who stood out in the winter snow with his black fur, but in Alaska, most of the wolves and werewolves were either gray, brown, or black. Now he would be the werewolf that would stand out with his white fur, but he had a perfect camouflage in the snow, especially if he was caught in the opening by men hunting wolves. That was when he thought of his son, Hunter. The curse of his father to have white fur and to be in Alaska. Wilder didn't have time to think. He had to make it to the compound before morning arrived, before he would be in the clearing and exposed. Running through the night, he stopped to catch his breath when he heard the whimpering of a wolf. Wilder cautiously strode over to where the wolf lay under a tree. He wouldn't approach it, because of the obvious dangers of a wounded creature. They were most vicious, but he didn't want to see it suffer. The animal glared up at him with bloodshot eyes. His lips curled back displaying his sharp canines. He was a young wolf. Only men killed the young. Wolves killed the old and sick. The men in the airplane had shot him with guns. Wilder saw a trail of blood leading to where he had dropped. It was near a cave. Probably his home, he thought. Wilder strode cautiously, amid a warning growl. Into his knapsack he placed his hand and pulled out a fresh piece of deer meat and threw it at him. The wolf caught it in his ferocious jaws and proceeded to devour it quick with his eyes and ears on guard. Looking up at him, the wolf recognized Wilder for what he was, an alpha werewolf. Although he ate the food, he didn't trust his kind. After all, it was Wilder's kind that hunted for sport, and the werewolves who were taking over their territories, hunting their food, and pushing them out and further north, where hunger would kill them faster than man. Soon they would become extinct. What these creatures didn't know was that the werewolves could become extinct before the wolves. If they didn't find enough fertile females willing to join their pack, they might be doomed in a few more years. That was what Bane was afraid of, and maybe why he wanted Adrian. Turning away from the doomed wolf and walking down the mountain, trudging through the soft snow, Wilder managed to make it to the meadow without problems this time. 
Wilder had arrived at his destination, round the back of Nina's father's compound. He saw lights in the house and smoke rising from chimneys. He knew from a visit the year before where Mina would be housed. He had to reach her first to find out where they were holding Hunter. He stood looking at the wall and thinking about Hunter with anticipation, then he leapt up and over it. Landing on his feet crouching low, he peered into a window. There was Mina sitting in a chair nursing one of her pups. The pup was a male Wilder could make out. Mina wasn't happy. Her face showed helplessness and discontent. There wasn't a glow in her face and eyes as he had seen when she lived with Robert on his ranch. He tapped on the window. Mina glanced around. Her eyes opened wide. She stood and lay the baby in the bassinet. Her face changed from surprise to elation when she saw that it was wilder. Rushing to the window, she opened it, and he leapt through it. Mina rushed to Wilder, what are you doing here, she whispered. I came to get you and Hunter. Hunter. She appeared confused. Hunter isn't here, Mina said, searching for Wilder's eyes which had turned to a deep dark blue. He appeared to be a controlled beast who had stalked his prey, only to find out that it wasn't what he thought it was. He paced anxiously. Where is your father? Wilder said his eyes lighting on every corner of the room and his ears searching around for sounds. What are you going to do? I'm going to end this. I can't have him making alliances with my enemies to destroy me and my family. I don't know where he is, and if I did know, I couldn't tell you. This is my family too. Your family is with Robert. Wilder turned to go. Please don't leave me and my pups here, Mina begged. I thought you wanted to be here with your family. I understand what you are saying. Your pack is my family now. Robert is my family and I have to go back with you. Wilder stood in one spot with his back to Mina, then he turned quick to face her. How many pups do you have? I have four. Three females and one male. Wilder smiled. It wasn't a large smile, but it was the best he could do for now. He was happy to welcome females into his pack. No longer would Adrian be alone. No longer would his sons be without mates. What Wilder didn't know was that Hunter had found his mate. If only he could find a way back home. I'll take two and you take two. You have to keep up with me, because I'm on foot. My plane is waiting at the airfield, waiting to take you back, Wilder said to Mina. You're not going back with me. Wilder didn't answer her. He wasn't used to answering females, unless it was necessary. That was, until he met Adrian. However, Mina was used to wear males, and she didn't expect an answer. There's an old truck parked about a mile from here near a river. I check it when my father isn't around. It works and has a tank full of gas. It will make it to the airfield. Give me a few minutes and I'll be ready, she said. Mina rushed stuffing some things into a bag, then she picked up the babies. They were quiet and still sleeping, and she wrapped them in blankets and hitched one to Wilder's back, and placed the other in his hand. He did the same for her, and then they left without anyone seeing or hearing them. When they stood outside looking at the wall, they both jumped and landed on their feet on the snow. Gazing at each other, Mina said, so far so good. She let out a brief release of breath. We don't have time to talk, we have to make it to the plane before sunrise, Hunter cautioned. They broke into a quick run, but Mina couldn't keep up with Wilder, and she had to stop after a mile. Wilder was just getting his stride, but he knew she didn't have the endurance he had. Every few miles he would stop to let her catch up, giving her time to breathe and rest. He slowed to confirm she wasn't being tracked by a bear. The nurses will be checking on the babies now, but thanks to my father and his antiquated way of living, he won't find out about me and my babies until later, and we will be at the ranch. You know he will come for you and the others, Mina said, looking up at Wilder's eyes. 
Wilder hadn't taken that into consideration when he made that promise to Robert. All he thought about was killing Bane and rescuing Hunter, but now he realized that he couldn't defend his pack with Lysel and Drayton sick, and Lysel's pups only cubs. He would have to accompany Mina and her pups back to the ranch. What was he to do about his son? It would kill Adrian to know that he didn't bring Hunter back. It became imperative that Wilder make a decision, now. He knew what decision he had to make, one a father never should be put in such a position where he had to decide. He was an alpha, and he had to decide life and death situations all the time, but this choice of whether his son lived or died was the most painful he would be required to make in his life. With the plane in view, Mina appeared exhausted. They had made it. Wilder had to decide in a matter of seconds to board the plane, or take his chances, hoping that Lysel and Drayton were well enough when Mina's father came for them. Wilder wasn't sure Lysel and Drayton would be up to the task of marshalling enough people to prevent him from killing all the pups and everyone working on the ranch. Then, there was the matter of Bane. What would he do about him? He had to be stopped, and stopped soon because he would never let his family alone as long as he didn't have control of Adrian. As Wilder neared the airplane, his heart sank. It was time for him to make a decision. Go after his son, or stay and make a stand against the Alaskan werewolves. It was a tough choice to make. He had made hard choices before. Letting Bane live was hard, but sharing his life mate with his brothers for the good of the pack was the hardest of all and yet he did it, and didn't regret that decision. But his son was another matter, his firstborn who hadn't taste life. Here he was left to Bane. Maybe Hunter would wonder why his father hadn't come for him. It was the first time Wilder had choked back tears. Wilder didn't want to imagine what Hunter was thinking. Hunter lay in a cage waiting to see what his future would hold, or if he had a future at all.